today we will be reading Sleeping Beauty. Let me see. Look at that beautiful hearts. Once upon a time, a great king and queen had a baby daughter. The princess was to be called Aurora, and the most important fairies in the land were invited to be her godmothers. The fairy godmothers gathered round Aurora's cradle to bestow their christening gifts. One gave beauty, another's kindness, cleverness, and good health. Unfortunately, there was one cross old fairy the queen forgot to ask. This moment, the nasty old witch arrived in a rage. And I, she said, promise that before she is sixteen, the princess will prick her finger with a spindle and die. Everyone in court was horrified, and the poor queen nearly fainted away. Happily, the wisest of the good fairies had hidden behind a curtain when the witch came in. Now she stepped out, and tapping the baby with her wand, she said, No, little princess, you shall not die. But fall asleep for a hundred years. A noble prince will wake you with a kiss. The old witch swept out of the palace, muttering angrily. The king and queen thanked the fairy joyfully for saving their child. That very day, the king passed a law forbidding anyone to use a spindle within ten miles of the royal palace. With every year that passed, Princess Aurora grew more beautiful and more beloved by all who knew her. Always... Kind and gay, she made everyone else as happy as herself. She sang like a nightingale and was as quick and clever as anyone you can imagine. There was not a dog, cat, or horse at the palace that did not greet her joyfully, for she was as much a favorite with animals as with people. The only thing that Aurora could not do as well as any girl in the kingdom was sell. Her parents were so terrified of her pricking herself that she'd never even seen a needle or a pin. The day before her 16th birthday, Princess Aurora was trying to keep out of the way while everyone wrapped up her birthday presents. Wandering up the steps of the tallest tower in the palace, the princess came to a tiny room she had never before been in before. There was sat a funny old woman, bent with age, tucked under the old woman's arm with a distaff, topped with flax, and a spindle, spinning from a long thread swung with her hand sung from her hand. Oh, do let me try that, please, cried Aurora, who had never seen a spindle before. It looks such fun. Of course, my dear child, croaked the old woman. But as she took the spindle, the princess pricked herself on its sharp point. A tiny drop of blood fell from her finger, and Aurora sank slowly to the floor. As for the old woman, who was the wicked fairy in disguise, she flew, cackling out of the window and crying, Now I am revenged. You did not escape me. She disappeared. When the princess was found lying in the little room by her waiting and waiting, king and queen were in despair. The king, realizing his daughter was not dead, but in deep sleep, had her laid on a beautiful bed of white and gold in the middle of a great hall. There she lay, looking so pretty and smiling as if she was having a lovely dream. As they turned sadly away, the king and queen saw the fairy who'd helped them before, standing beside them. She waved her hand, murmuring a spell, and a bright shower like stars floated round the palace, as if from far away came the sweet sound of soothing music. The king and queen wandered drowsily to the throne room and sat nodding on their thrones. All through the palace, people started to fall asleep. The cooks, the kitchen fires, the soldiers in the guard room, the grooms and horses in the stable. The Lord Chamberlain snored in his office, and a scullery maid lay dreaming amid the kettles and pots. In the royal muse, the hawks hunched their feathered shoulders and shut their eyes. Even the butterflies in the garden went to sleep on the flowers. Princess Aurora's little dog, who had jumped into the bed beside her, fell asleep with his chin resting on the princess's arm. One moment, all was busy. Knights were playing music for their ladies. Pages were bustling to and fro. Duchesses were gossiping. And the court fool was dancing merrily. As the spell started working, everyone yawned, blinked their eyes, and sank down to sleep. Dogs, cats, even fish for dinner slumbered peacefully. Little roses grew twining round the pillars of the silent palace. All round the palace, Aurora's fairy godmother grew thick woods of brambles, thorns, and great trees. A 
as years passed by, people forgot the king, queen, and princess Aurora. Some folk believe the ballast belonged to a witch or a dragon. Those who saw the tops of the towers above the trees and tried to reach them found the thorn hedge much too thick to pass through. So 99 years, 11 months, and 30 days passed by. Then came the day that would complete the hundred years. A young prince, whose father ruled the neighboring kingdom, was out hunting with his courtiers. Trying to take a shortcut through some woods, the prince got lost, and he and his hours wandered all day trying to find the rest of the hunt. As they came to the top of a hill, the prince was astonished to see, stretching before him a great forest. Above the trees, the towers and roofs of a distant palace twinkled in the sunshine. The prince was wondering whose palace it might be when Aurora's fairy godmother appeared before him. She told the astonished prince that in the palace was the loveliest princess in the world. You can rescue her from an enchantment if you are brave and determined, said the fairy. But to get to her, you will have to pass through the great thorn hedge that surrounds the palace. The prince thanked the fairy with a polite bow. Filled with excitement, he roared to he rode towards the enchanted forest. As he drew near, he saw the wood was indeed a tangled mass of huge thorn bushes. Not wishing his horse to be torn by the brambles, the prince dismounted and left his charger grazing under the trees. Next sword in hand, he started to hack a path through the thorn hedge. Great was his surprise when, after a few minutes, the fierce thorns turned into beautiful, brilliantly colored flowers. Quickly, the prince made his way up up to the palace and up the stone steps. Here the door was guarded by two tall sentries who had been snoring gently for a hundred years. Into the great hall strode the young prince, his footsteps echoing in the strange silence. The prince marveled at the sleeping courtiers who lay all round in their old-fashioned clothes now a hundred years out of date. In the center of the room he saw the big white and gold bed. Lying fast asleep on the bed was the most beautiful girl the prince had ever seen. Her fine, long, golden hair flowed over the pillow. She wore a little crown and the prettiest pale blue dress edged in gold. Asleep beside the princess, Mopser, her little dog, dreamed he was having a delicious bone. At the side of the bed, her faithful little page dreamed of the day when he would be a great knight. For a moment, the handsome prince stood gazing at the beautiful golden-haired girl, wondering how he could break the spell. Stooping, he kissed her gently on the cheek. Instantly, Princess Aurora opened her lovely blue eyes and looked at him. The prince, who had fallen madly in love with her, took Aurora by the hand and begged her to marry him. All around them, the palace was waking up. Guards shouldered their pikes, women straightened, ladies straightened their headdresses, little mobster yawned and wagged his tail, and Aurora's page looked up in astonishment. In the stables, the horses woke, and the grooms started grooming them. The cooks in the kitchen started making puddings and sauces. Fires roasted the joint, and the head butler refreshed himself with a cup of wine. The king and queen came in from the thorn room and hurried to embrace their daughter. Then, thanking the prince warmly for breaking the spell, they gladly agreed that he and Princess Aurora should be married. Messengers were sent to fetch the prince's father and mother, and when they arrived, the wedding was held with great rejoicing. The kind fairy was the guest of honor among kings, queens, distinguished magicians, and fairies. Not long after, the parents retired, and the prince and Aurora became king and queen. They lived happily and had many children, and you may be sure they asked all the right fairies to the christenings. That was lovely. And, uh, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.